earned tens of thousands of dollars as a Grubhub driver. And Grubhub has been profitable for me no matter what changes occur with Grubhub. And I'm going to share with you how you can remain profitable with Grubhub despite any pay changes that may occur. Hi, I'm Shane of The Well 5 and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. In this video, I'm going to share with you Grubhub's new pay structure and I'm going to talk with you about what impact Grubhub's new pay structure has had on the income that I'm able to earn as a Grubhub driver. Grubhub has been super profitable for me over the years because it's helped me to pay down about 50% of my $108,000 debt. So as you can imagine, Grubhub's pay structure really matters to me because I'm in this aggressive debt payoff journey and so every single dollar counts. And so I'm going to get into what Grubhub's new pay structure is like and how you can maximize the money that you make with Grubhub despite the changes that Grubhub might have with their pay structure. Before I get into the video, make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up because it really helps out my channel and it lets other people know that this is a great video to watch and you wanted to watch it as well and I'm sure that other people want to watch it as Grubhub drivers so that we can all make lots of money. So do me a favor and do everyone else a great favor by giving this video a big thumbs up. I have done several videos on how to maximize the pay that you earn as a Grubhub driver. And since I've recorded those videos, I've had several comments asking me about how the new pay structure changes have impacted the way we make money as Grubhub drivers. So just to recap. Previously, Grubhub would pay based off three different factors. So those factors were tips, base pay, and mileage. And of recently, the pay structure has changed a little bit and it has eliminated the base pay. Now, as a Grubhub driver, you get paid based off of the mileage, your estimated driving time, and also tips. And so I'm going to explain to you how those things have had an impact on the money that I make. With Grubhub's new pay structure, you get paid for mileage to the restaurant and from the restaurant to the customer. The new pay rate is 22 cents per mile. And they calculate mileage based off of an estimated mileage. And it's supposed to be closer to an actual mileage calculation, whereas before, Grubhub used to only pay for mileage in a straight line from the restaurant to the customer. So now you're getting paid to the restaurant and also from the restaurant to the customer in an estimated mileage calculation. So according to Grubhub, you should be getting paid for more mileage than you used to get paid, although the rate has dropped to now 22 cents a mile, whereas before it was 50 cents a mile. The second component of Grubhub's pay calculation is time. So time is calculated based off of the amount of time that Grubhub expects for you to be waiting for the customer's food to be prepared and the amount of time that it takes for you to drive from the restaurant to the customer to deliver their food. And they are paying you 13 cents per minute for the amount of time that you spent waiting and driving. So time is a new factor in Grubhub's pay calculation because before we never were paid for our time, but now we were paid a couple of cents for our time. So while I was in the midst of recording this video, I actually got an email from Grubhub that said that they're introducing a new feature into the Grubhub app that will allow you to set a timer once a customer has been non-responsive once you arrive to the, the delivery destination. And so you can set this timer to notify the customer that you have arrived and you've been trying to get in contact with them to no avail. And therefore you don't have to contact Grubhub anymore. And then once the timer expires, then you'll be able to move on to another order and you don't have to worry about ever contacting Grubhub or anything or being worried about being dinged or anything like that. 
which that does, never happens, but you, it will alleviate some of your fears. So you might be wondering, how does this new timer feature fit into the time calculation of the new pay structure? So based on what I read, it doesn't seem like you'll be paid any additional money for waiting for customers who are non-responsive once you arrive to the delivery destination. So unfortunately, you won't be paid for this, but you will be paid for your time that you wait at a restaurant and the time that it takes to leave the restaurant to deliver the order to the customer, customer based off of Grubhub's estimated calculations. The third factor in Grubhub's pay calculation is tip. We've always been paid tips and we've always received 100% of our tips and this does not change at all with Grubhub's new pay structure. So with those three factors in the calculation for Grubhub's new pay structure, they believe that we'll get paid more as Grubhub drivers because they're paying a little bit more when it comes to the mileage and with time. And so they're expecting that for the same delivery that you would have done before under the old pay structure, that you'll get paid a little bit more. Now we're not talking about dollars or tens of dollars or anything like that. We're talking about a dollar or two or three dollars more per order, depending on the factors that surround that particular delivery. So we should overall be able to make a few extra dollars at the end of a pay period, which we get paid every single week with Grubhub. But this shouldn't make a huge difference in the amount of money that you're making. So you shouldn't probably be making like hundreds of dollars more every, every pay period. You'll probably just see an extra couple of dollars at the end of the pay period based off of this new Grubhub pay structure. This new pay structure seems to have rolled out in phases. Some drivers were introduced to this pay structure in early 2019, but I was introduced to it in the Atlanta region in June 2019. So it's been a few months now since I've been a driver under this new pay structure. And I'm gonna tell you what I've seen in terms of the differences in the amount of money that I'm being paid per order and the amount of money that I'm making on a weekly basis. Prior to the new pay structure being rolled out in my region, in the Atlanta region, we were being tested with this other model where we were getting a base pay of $5 per order and we were still getting tips and mileage at the same rate. And for some reason, it seemed as though I was getting paid a lot more under that model than the original model that every Grubhub driver had originally started with. And so I was really pleased with that model and based off of some comments that I saw on the Facebook page for people who were introduced to the new model early in, in 2019, I wasn't really looking forward to getting this new pay structure because to me, I was getting paid pretty well under this other tested model that they were doing with the $5 base pay. And so I, I just didn't want to, <laughs> I was dreading the day basically when I would get the email that said that we were all being rolled in to the new pay structure. So we finally got rolled in and I worked Grubhub for a few weeks to see what the differences were in the amount of money that I was making. And really, I didn't see a difference. To be fair, I did not see a difference in the amount of money I was being paid based off of that tested model of $5 base pay per order and the new model. I didn't see a difference. I was getting paid about the same amount of money as I would normally get paid under that model. Now, if I were to compare how much money I was getting paid under the old model, where it was a $3 base pay, and to this new model where there is no base pay, I would say I probably was making a few more dollars than I would have made before. The reason why I could tell this is because I am a cherry picker. And so with the new model, I noticed that I do not cherry pick as often as I did under the old model. And that didn't change between the tested model and the new model. And so to me, the tested model that I was under and the new model were doing pretty fine for me. I was making good money. 
And so I have seen that some people have experienced some difficulties with actually making money under this new model. And from what I've gathered, it seems like people who are in less populated markets where people aren't using Grubhub as often, they seem to be complaining about the amount of money that they're making. But I live in a pretty busy market. I work in a pretty busy market, the Atlanta market, and I'm always constantly getting orders. And so I haven't seen there be like a negative impact on the amount of money that I'm making under this new pay structure. And to be honest, I kind of see that I'm getting orders averaging about ten dollars between ten to thirteen dollars whereas before that was kind of like i would have to cherry pick to get that whereas now the standard order for me seems to be around that ten to thirteen dollar range and that's pretty good in my opinion if you watch any of my other videos you know that i am a cherry picker and i provide a lot of tips to the other cherry pickers out there on how to identify a good order to accept for Grubhub. And so you might be wondering, under this new pay structure, is it even worth cherry picking? So as I mentioned, under the new pay structure, I don't cherry pick as often, but I do still cherry pick. And the reason why I still cherry pick is because with this new pay structure, you do not have a set base pay. So you still are going to be sent some really, really lowball offers. Now with the old pay structure, I never really saw $3 orders that often, but with the new pay structure, you're going to see $3 orders a little bit more often, especially if the person is not tipping. Because the only thing that you can rely on at that point is the mileage, the estimated mileage and the estimated time. And so if Grubhub is estimating that the mileage will be very short and if they're also estimating that the time will be very short, then you have to rely then on the tip. But if the customer does not provide a tip, we're talking about only a couple of dollars now, maybe not even sometimes depending on if the, you know, the order is next door to you. So there might be instances where you still have to cherry pick. And so you might be thinking like, well, if the order is really close by and I don't have to drive that far, and if the time is gonna be very short, why not just accept that order? And that might be something that you want to consider accepting. Because the time and mileage are estimated, it's likely that the estimation will be off a little bit. There is no telling that if you go into the restaurant that they're going to really be quick. Something might have happened in the restaurant, you know, someone might have come in late to work or someone decided not to come in to work one day, or there might be some chaotic issue that's going on within the restaurant that affects the time. Normally, maybe that restaurant is very quick, but it just so happens that when you go in there that time, that restaurant is taking like 30 minutes. But Grubhub will have no clue that this is really happening and they won't compensate you for the 30 minutes even though they originally estimated that it will be a five minute wait time. And so you have to really kind of think through these things. So maybe you do pick a really short order or a really quick order with a short distance to deliver to but then when you get there you might decide hey this is actually not worth it I've been waiting for 20 minutes now and it seems like they're not actually going to provide me the food anytime soon so that I can deliver it and so you might decide you know what I want to actually reject this order after you've already accepted. So there are times where you will reject some lowball orders even under this new pay structure because at first glance it might seem like it's a good idea to do because it's gonna be really quick because the time estimated is short and the distance travel will also be short. But in the end, you never know until you actually do it. So you'll have to keep some of these things in mind. I have some additional tips that have nothing to do with the new pay structure that is going to help you to maximize the amount of profit that you're able to make as a Grubhub driver. If you're interested in checking it out, just 
click on this video right here. It's gonna break down a few things that you need to keep in mind as a Grubhub driver to maximize your earnings. And I hope that you appreciate this video. And if you did, make sure that you share it out to other Grubhub drivers because we all want to make the most amount of money possible. Thanks for watching and I hope that you subscribe so I can see you in the next one. Bye.